Pastor Blakes, welcome back to the podcast. Man, thank you so much for for having me back. I I uh, I was glad to know that I did a halfway decent job last time that you <laughs> that you would invite me to come back again. How are you, Doug? I'm great, man, and I'm honored to have you back. You did a great job, and I think the best place to start is a lot of the people that follow you are women, so you've gotten to know that side of things pretty well, and you've also given that you're a guy, gotten to know the masculine and the, and the male side of things uh, very well too. In your understanding, why do you think men are having such a hard time attracting women today? Social media. I think social media has put such a divide, such an, an, an unrealistic expectation on women and men that it's preventing the two from coming together. And when you think about a man attracting, you know, a certain kind of woman, it becomes very, very difficult because the pool is being polluted 24-7 with these phones that we carry in our hands. And all of this bogus information we're getting about relationships from people who have none and the culture is constantly drifting further and further and further away from what I call classical values. You know, we don't even like to have discussions about uh, role designations anymore in relationships. So if, if we don't have a discussion about role designations, is there such a thing as a man being dominantly masculine or a woman being dominantly feminine? And so I think you know, that's my long preacher answer, but I think social media is, it's almost like uh, a group of broke friends riding around in the car with one another all day, teaching one another about money. And I think this is why it's, it's problematic for the man to attract the kind of woman he desires and vice versa. If a man's having a hard time attracting a woman, what types of things does he typically need to work on so that he can start to attract somebody that he's interested in? Confidence. You know, I think uh, coming from a male perspective, now I am at this stage in my life, I'm a um, faithful husband, you know, and I say that proudly. 29 years, the biggest attraction that a woman may have, to, that a healthy woman may have to a man is, comes by way of his confidence. I think every man has to work on uh, his confidence. I think that comes, you know, by way of a, a few things. I think physical fitness, which is a big thing with you, definitely plays into how a man shows up in the world. I was listening to a guy just uh, last week, and it was so true. He said a guy that takes care of his body and is physically fit uh, can walk into a room and the whole room will respect him because they know the price he has to pay to have a body like that. A man can be a billionaire, but if he's out of shape, he can walk into a room and be invisible. Physical fitness, um, I think also working on being the best version of ourselves as men. You know what I mean? It's like the Bible says, and I know this is not a church service, but the Bible says there's a time and a season to everything. There's a time to move. There's a time to, to, to hold back. Well, I think every guy should really work on becoming the best version of himself, spirit, soul, and body. And it's like when you wake up as a man and you feel great about yourself, that energy translates into how the world receives you and more specifically, how females receive you. So, you know, don't be the guy that's just desiring women but be the guy that is constantly working on becoming the best version of yourself, being able to show up in the world where your worthiness is apparent, where people can see it in the fruit of your life. 
and also becoming oblivious to rejection. You know, because many times the the, the absolute ideal woman, if we're in church, the, the woman that God has ordained for you, may not say yes the first time. But when you are when you are a confident, strong, healthy guy, rejection does not move you off of your square so easily. I think a lot of guys give up a lot too soon. And sometimes women will give you a hint of rejection just to see if you have that that masculine trait that makes us continue to hunt, even when it looks like the object of our hunting is is fleeing. I know a lot of men will do certain things to try to attract women because they think that that's what women want, right? What do you think are some common misconceptions out there? I mean, you you spoke you speak to a lot of women. What are some common misconceptions that are online or that are just out there as far as what women want, as far as what, you know, attracts women to men other than the confidence thing? Well, I think I think a lot of guys that have not had the experience with women or they've not had the experience or they've not had a, a, a male role model to really teach them the, the dynamics of the feminine masculine dance that's done between men and women. I think uh, one of the biggest issues is guys believe, you know, I just, I, I, I just show up and I just give her whatever she wants and I just be a very nice guy all of the time. And you should be a nice guy, but you should never give a woman everything she wants and thinking that this somehow is going to attract her to you. Uh, Women are attracted to guys that have boundaries, just like we teach women to have boundaries. Guys have to have boundaries as well. And, And our boundaries as men are our principles that we stand on and live by. When a woman begins to compromise those boundaries and becomes disrespectful, uh, I think it becomes attractive to a woman when a guy can say, hey, man, you know, I really, really feel you. I, I, I like you. I appreciate you. But what you just carried on is not it's not going to work for me. And being able to being able to walk away from a situation, I think also consistency when a man is consistent, you know, when a man is not vacillating from week to week or month to month, but he's pretty much the same guy that I met at the restaurant that he projected himself to be. And now as I'm getting to know him, he's pretty much, he's pretty much that same guy publicly, privately. He's a consistent guy. Another thing that um, I believe guys are falling short on is just uh, the emotional intelligence. You know, being able to, because I think the biggest thing with guys that have it wrong is I'm just going to be nice and just give her everything she wants. And that's not really what healthy quality women are looking for. And maybe I shouldn't use the word quality, but healthy women are not looking for a guy that's just going to be a simp or a pushover. They're looking for a guy that's emotionally healthy, a guy that's self-confident, a guy that knows who he is, a guy that has boundaries and limits and will stand on it, uh, even to his own relational peril. But I think women mostly, well, not mostly, but to a great deal, are looking for men that are emotionally intelligent, guys that can listen, guys that can read between the lines, guys that are patient, guys that are, that have a sense of clarity, you know, I mean, these are just some of my thoughts. I totally agree with you. And I think that there is a lot of things that men get wrong as far as what women actually want from them. And I think one of the mistakes is this, this nice guy thing, right? That you, you touched on where, you know, you you have to treat somebody with kindness and be respectful, no doubt, right? But if you're a pushover, you have no boundaries, you're just constantly agreeing with them just for the sake of 
you know, maintaining or building a relationship, like eventually you're, they're, they're going to lose respect for you. Right. And it's not going to end up working out. And so how can somebody avoid that trap where they're not when they, cause when they, I think a lot of times what happens is when they hear, don't be nice, they go to the other extreme and they just be a jerk and they play hard to get and they, they, they shut down on purpose just to build more, try to build more attraction, which isn't good either. How can, how can men build this balance so that they're not going to either extreme? Well, I think it boils down to just being real. You know, again, I'm, I'm a man that's married 29, 29 years. Well, my wife is a very strong-willed individual. And if I were not a masculine, assertive man, let's not say aggressive, if I were not a masculine, assertive man, even my wonderful little Christian wife of 29 years, who's now a, a wonderful little grandmother, would uh, have turned me into a pushover. I think it's the natural tendency for a woman to test a man to see if he's going to stand on his square or not. And I think the, the main way I've been able to maintain the balance is that I was very clear in the beginning of what I wanted from my wife, what I needed from my wife, and what she wanted and needed from me. And so from based on those terms, we developed this relationship. Now, with Within the context of those terms, we laid out some things relative to what's crossing the line, what's disrespect, you know, so forth and so on, so that we don't have to constantly be in this cycle, you know, where we're, we're competing for who's going to be the boss today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she understands my role as a husband because I, I communicated it. I made it clear. This is what I view myself being in your life. This is what I think a wife is, you know. These are the things that I, I just need you to respect. And, and 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 she would say to me, well, these are the things I need you to respect. So we created these terms of, of agreement and understanding so that we don't have to constantly go through this, 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 this tug of war for who's going to wear the pants today. But a man that is constantly working are constantly saying yes, constantly working to appease a woman uh, is going to eventually lose that woman's respect. And then what happens is, and I was just kind of dealing with this on some platform of mine, when this very, very nice guy who's, who's bought into this idea that I'm just become a, a doormat for the woman and just say yes all the time, yes, dear, yes, dear, Yes, dear. What happens is the woman will, will exhaust you with that. And then she will wake up one day and realize she doesn't respect you. Because anybody that says yes, 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 yes to someone else all of the time clearly lacks self-respect. And any man that shows up with a sense of disrespect for himself, and that's what we're doing, we're disrespecting ourselves, will ultimately be disrespected by his woman. Now his heart is broken. And once his heart is broken, because he feels like, I did everything I could, you did everything you shouldn't. Now because his heart is broken, now he, he gets angry, he turns to some red pill kind of content, and now he goes from you know, Mr. Nice Guy to Mr. Terror. And it's like, you know, the war of two extremes when the reality is we should just be clear and real about what our non-negotiables are, what's disrespectful. We should be able to say to any woman that we're dealing with, I don't like what you just did. I don't like what you just said. We don't have to get aggressive, but we definitely need to be clear and assertive and um, if you can't see eye to eye, be confident and healthy enough as a man to move on without breaking the woman or, you know, any such thing. So we've talked about what women desire in a man, right? We've talked about what men can do to become more attractive and desirable to, to a woman. As far as pursuing them and letting them know 
that they're interested, what's the best way for a man to pursue a woman in a way that's effective, not too aggressive, but also not too passive? Well, number one, passive pursuit is rarely rewarded. Aggressive pursuit will usually attract broken women. There's this balance in the middle where a man that's looking for a healthy, wife-conscious woman, there's this, this healthy middle ground where he's not overly pursuing and he's not laid back too far. But let me, let me, well, let me finish this. I have so many thoughts running through my mind. It has to be respectful. Any woman that a man can just use the, the street vernacular, what's up, mama, you know, you know, what's happening, baby? And you screaming across the street and she responds to that. Clearly, this is a woman that has some self-esteem issues. So a quality woman that would make for a wife is only going to respond to a respectful but yet a direct approach in terms of the man's pursuit. That might look something like, you know, in a party, she seems to be single, he's by himself, and, you know, it's, it's the man that can walk up to a lady and say, hello, my name is... You know, and if she says, okay, my name is, and she smiles and she continues to look, that's clearly to that guy, that's a signal that here's an open door for me to continue the conversation. So then you begin to make small talk, and but you're leading as the man. And so then it gets to the point where you can say, well, hey, I enjoyed this conversation. You know, are you, are you good with maybe going to, not dinner, lunch sometime this week? You know, daytime stuff. That kind of respectful but yet direct pursuit versus the guy that sits on the other side of the room and he looks at the girl all night long and he's afraid every time she looks back at him making eye contact, which is the way quality, healthy women say, okay, okay, okay. Every time she looks at him, he looks away because he's so shy and he only looks when she's not looking. Well, he's, he's, he's going to go home by himself. And then you have the other guy in, in the party is like, hey, you know, you, 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 you're fine and I like what I see. Well, she's going to reject him. The healthy guy is respectful, but he's always direct. And I think this is what women are looking for. Women are looking for men that show up like gentlemen. And I've been thinking about that word, Doug, gentleman. That's an awesome word when you really stop to think about it, because what that, what that term does is it encapsulates the, the assertive side of us, because whenever you put man on a thing, it's speaking of the assertive, even aggressive when necessary side of, you know, a being, but then you couple it with gentle. That's the respectful, thoughtful, safe you know, that's the, that's the lion with the fangs that just destroyed an animal in the jungle, brought it back to its cubs, and now takes those same fangs and picks up the baby cub and carries it gently across. You see, gentlemen, we have to find that balance where we're not simps. That's a, that's a popular term that's used. And we're not necessarily subscribing to uh, the extreme red pill content, but we're gentlemen. When we need to be assertive, we can be. But when we need to be gentle and respectful and safe, we know how to be. This is what I believe, being a man that deals with women primarily, women are looking for. They're looking for a guy that, you know, he's he's respectful, but at the same time, we know he has in him the capacity to go there if necessary. And so a lot of times, you'll, you'll hear a lot where people are like, you know what, if you want to meet a partner, get out in the world, go socialize, go to events, go out to restaurants, you know, go to a gym, 
go to the library, go to places where you're looking to find your potential partner and stay offline, right? Or stay in, yeah, and, and stay offline. You mentioned the eye contact thing. Is that the main sign that a woman is interested in a, in a man coming up to her? Because I think a lot of times men are afraid of approaching a woman, not because they don't feel confident, because I think they don't want to come across as being like a creep or anything. Correct. Well, that's one of the things I teach ladies, you know, that if a guy is going to pursue, you have to prove. And a healthy guy, a guy that has something to lose and a guy that is self-respecting uh, is not going to, you know, though he may be uh, assertive in terms of his pursuit, he's not going to go further than your body language or your signals say to him he's allowed. When a woman makes eye contact, when a woman smiles at a man, if a guy is in a social setting and he, he makes eye contact, she makes eye contact, she smiles, he smiles, and he looks away, if he looks back again and she, she looks at him again, I think that's more than a green light that, you know, so I think I think guys have to just begin to slow it down and stop trying to use, you know, all of these red pill psychological tricks and just study the psychology of women. Just study the particular kind of woman that you might desire. Women that have self-respect and something to lose, they're not going to throw themselves, but they are going to give you subtle but very clear signals, it's cool for you to approach. You know, a woman will make eye contact over and over again, saying to you, man, come on, make, you know, and then once you start the conversation, she'll continue the conversation. If a woman, if you're talking to a woman and she's not looking around the room, her eyes are on you, she's absolutely, completely, and totally interested in you. Though she will not say that, she can't afford to say that. She's protecting her virtue. It's your job to pursue. It's her job to approve. But you got, somebody has to sit us down and teach us these various, you know, signals in terms of interacting and dealing with women. And once you've gone through all of that, the only thing that's left to do is to give her your information or however it lines up she may want to give you hers and and you know see if you can put something on the calendar before you leave you know can we get together be be very definitive can we get together next week for lunch and she says yes okay well pull your phone out okay how's wednesday how's thursday don't leave that open you know what i mean all of this is respectful but you're proving that you're you're a leader and she's constantly saying yes, 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 yes. Now, if she says to you, maybe you had a great conversation that night in the, in the party, and she says to you, well, next week is not good for me. Well, you don't take it any further. You know, well, how's the week after that? Now you, 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 you're, you're running too fast. Slow down. Okay, well, cool. You know, hey, well, here's my information. Let me know whenever you're available. And more than likely, she'll call because some women we'll push it even to the next level to see if, you know. So yeah, those are those are some things my late father taught me about dealing with women respectfully. What's the fastest way to push a woman away that you're interested in? Oh, wow. The fastest way to push a woman away that you're interested in is to chase her. And I'm using that term intentionally because most people would will lump pursuit and chase in the they're not the same thing to pursue a woman is not to chase her just like i teach women should never chase men men should never chase women anything you're that you're chasing is running away from you think about that anything that you have to chase is running away from you the fastest way to lose the interest of a woman you're interested in is to chase her. A man should be clear about how he feels, what he thinks, what he desires from a woman. 
But if she does not reciprocate that sentiment, he should let that go. If if I have made the eye contact, I've made my way across the room, I've said to you, hello, my name is, and you've said to me, hello, my name is, and we've had this wonderful conversation, and I've said to you, well, you know, hey, I enjoyed this time with you. How's lunch next week? And we, we go to lunch next week, and you have all of my information. You've had a chance to interrogate me. you got a sense that I'm not a, a creep or a dangerous guy. And I make, I make a call to you after lunch. I make a call to you a day or so later. You don't return that call. I make another call to you a day or so later. You don't return that call. I leave you a text. You don't respond to that. I'm not reaching anymore. Now it's your turn. Because anything beyond that becomes chasing. You know, a guy that's begging a woman, uh, you know, whatever you need me to do, whatever you want me to do, she's going to automatically be a guy that is overtly sexual. Many guys have lost great women because they couldn't control themselves sexually. And, you know, you listen to this stuff and nobody's taught you and you're coming out, you're coming out with all of this strong sexual energy. Um, you're going to lose the interest of a great woman every time. So, you know, chasing a guy that's, overly sexual, uh, a guy that does not listen. Women, women, healthy women pay attention to the empathy level of a man. His ability to put himself in her shoes and see life from her perspective. Well, we can't do that if we don't listen. Any guy that will listen to a woman will will actively listen. I mean, really sit in, in conversation mode and actively listen to a woman is going to make an impression on that woman's heart. So a guy that uh, you, will, you will drive her away if you, if you don't know how to listen, if you're, you're, you're so egotistical that the whole night the conversation is about you and how much money I got and, you know, how much weight I can lift and you know, my career advancement and, 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 you know, all the girls that want me and, and you, you, your conversation goes to that which is sexual or your guy that's just sitting there like, a, like a, a puppy waiting for its master, you know, with your tongue hanging out. You're just so enamored. You may be, I mean, you may be blown away by this woman. You have to have enough self-control to harness that until you know it's safe for you as a man to be able to be as vulnerable as to let a woman know all of your heart. So those are just some of my old guy thoughts. I want to talk about vulnerability in men because, you know, obviously over the years and it's gotten better now, men are se- have been seen as weak if they show emotion and they open up. And now you're seeing a lot more people talk about the importance of men being vulnerable, opening up. You just, you know, you talked about emotional intelligence. You want, you know, you talked about guys, you know, needing to listen to women if they want to them to stick around. And vulnerability is obviously very important in relationships. Where's the healthy balance with that to where you're not a man isn't overly emotional and vulnerable and ends up pushing a woman away because he's proven that he doesn't know how to harness his emotions. Correct. And uh, that's a very, very, very good point because many times guys, you know, get great women that they can open up to and rather than balancing that, they just kind of go and do a complete and total emotional dump on their woman, you know, ever so often. As a man, there's, you have to understand that when the Bible talks about, uses the term husband biblically, the etymologic, etymology behind that word, it's made of two words, house band. The husband is the house band. One portion of scripture talks about how 
the, the, the husband should honor the wife as being the weaker vessel, meaning he should be the stronger one. Uh, when a woman submits, we often use that term in the church, submission. Well, when a woman submits to a man, it, it's a choice of the woman's, but women naturally submit to men that feel that are their safe place. And so though it is um, though it is my privilege to have a wife that I can say, well, babe, you know, I'm not, not feeling my best today. I'm, my confidence is kind of down about X, Y, Z. I don't take and just dump all of my stuff that I'm dealing with as a man on my wife. It's because she is not designed to carry that. There's, there's a weight limit on relationships and a man has to understand when something is for him to share with his wife versus when it's something for him to share with his circle. That's why every man needs a strong, righteous circle of brothers versus when it's something he needs to bring to his therapist. But as a man, I can't be the one sitting at the table, you know, in a, in a puddle of tears crying about the bills backed up, you know, when, when, and I'm saying I'm sitting in a puddle of tears crying about the bills backed up. We don't have enough money. And then at the same time, I'm saying to my wife, well, submit to me as your leader. You see, uh, this is another mistake. This is something I observed my late father in terms of how he functioned with my mother. Uh, he never dumped emotionally on my mom. And though he had a lot of things on his heart and on his mind, the man has to be the, the, the emotional fortress of the woman. The movie Godfather, he put it best. So, so many lessons in that movie. And I know some say, well, how does a preacher watch a gangster movie and get lessons? A lot of lessons in that movie. The old man said, women and children can afford to be careless but men cannot. You know why? It's because the buck stops with you. And so as a man, we have to be, you used the term just a second ago, we have to be even more emotionally intelligent. We got to know when we're getting, when we're starting to move towards our limits, because if I go off the rails, my wife and my kids and my grandkids are coming with me because I am as the Bible puts it, the strong man of my family. And so there's a limit that a man should dump on his wife. Then there are things that a man needs to bring to other men. Then there are things that a man needs to bring to his counselor or his therapist, you know? And so you, you got you to gotta figure out the balance. I think every man has to be honest with himself when he's not healthy. You know, when you're just at that place and I've been there and what I did, what I, what, what has been my practice as opposed to just dumping on my wife, what I did was I, I, I've been transparent enough, vulnerable enough to say, I'm not in a good place right now, you know, and she kind of knows what that means. I'm not in a good place, but you've reached your weight limit. But if you see me acting a little strange, don't take it personally. And then I'd go outside and I'd find some other men or I'd find counsel from one of my mentors or I'd go get a counselor and I'd allow, I would allow, I would process my stuff in a proper place. Just because your wife is a safe place doesn't mean she's a proper place to vent certain things. It's, it would be the same thing as a parent, you know, taking the six-year-old kid or the eight-year-old kid or the 10-year-old kid sitting them down at the table and crying in a puddle of tears about the bills and your tuition, how we're going to pay your tuition. Well, that's too much weight for that 10-year-old kid. You know what I mean? Uh, the most they, should, most they should hear is, you know, hey, man, dad's trying to process some stuff. So if I, if I look a little different, it's not about you. I'm just dealing with some stuff. And so likewise, it is with a man and his wife. You have to know how much your wife can handle and 
and then it it behooves you to find a strong circle or qualified counselors or mentors. When women say, I want men to open up to me more, I want men to be vulnerable, what do they mean by that? You know, we have a tendency as men to be very guarded. We go from the extreme of dumping, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we go from we go from that extreme to just being almost like a marble statue. You know, we don't express our feelings, our thoughts, our emotion, you know. And, and most of the time this is done in the name of being cool, but it, it, it almost feels for the woman like it's hard to crack this guy's soul. You know, who is this guy on the inside? Because we we live in this in this pod of masculinity, we call it, you know, alpha maleism, and we we don't we don't let the woman in. Sometimes that's because we've been trained to do it that way, you know. Men that are toxically mysterious tend to have greater outcomes in terms of sexual experiences. When a woman can't figure a man out, a broken woman you know, that's uh, been hurt by the culture, she tends to pursue that guy because, or chase that guy because she wants to prove that she can crack this code. Or we have the guy that's been hurt before. And so now he's shut up and he ain't let, he wants, he wants to be with women, but he ain't let no, he's not letting anybody in. But the reality is you can't develop a healthy, meaningful relationship with a woman if you don't possess the capacity to let her in to a certain extent. So while while it is, you know, advised for every man to have a fence around himself, because you have to guard, you have to guard your heart as a man, because when a man's, when a woman's heart gets broken, she goes home and she cries in a pillow. When a man's heart gets broken, he burns the city down. So a man has to guard his heart, but we have to be careful not to have walls that are impenetrable and rather have have fences with gates that we open and close appropriately, letting the right people in at the right time. And so when women say, well, I, I wish he would just be more vulnerable, she wants to know, what are your dreams? What's your vision? What are you feeling sometimes? What are you thinking? What makes you happy? What makes you laugh? What do you like? What don't you like? You know, a lot of times all of these things are missing in terms of our conversation with women. They just don't have a clue who we are. What do you think are like three red flags that should never be ignored that might not be so obvious? That's a great question. Bad energy. You know, I'm sure, Doug, you've been there where you've been on a date with somebody and maybe she was a great looking girl, but man, there's somebody energy that just, mm -mm, just didn't agree with you. But you know, the, the, the eyes say, man, look over that, look over that, you know, don't worry about our energy. Look over that bad energy, bad behavior, and not necessarily behavior towards you, but behavior towards others. When, when you see, here's the thing that, that most of the dating coaches bring up. When you see the way a person, in this case a woman, uh, demeans or deals with waitstaff at a restaurant or the guy parking your car, you know, if she's condescending, uh, if she's rude, if she's dismissive, well, this is bad behavior that cannot be cannot be ignored because this is just, you know, a preview of what's going to eventually manifest inside of any relationship you might develop with this individual. Bad energy, bad behavior, and watch this, conflict of values. You know, it's it's when it's when me, okay, here I am. 
I'm a preacher. I'm I'm obviously a Christian. I don't I don't go around, you know, waving my Bible in the air. I try to let you know, live and let live and you know, I don't have to have arguments with everybody that has a different religion, but I'm a Christian. So clearly my values are biblical. My values are Christian, Judeo-Christian values. Well, if I were a single guy, there are a whole lot of women that are extremely intelligent, educated, beautiful, wonderful personalities, but we're on a date and she says, well, I don't believe in God. Oh my goodness, you got everything else I'm looking for. There would be a part that would say, well, ignore that and work on that later. You should never ignore bad energy. You should never ignore bad behavior. And you should never ignore conflicting values, especially when it's something that is, we have to define what is, a, what is what's not a deal breaker for us. When, when there are conflicting values, we have to be able to say, great dinner, great lunch, you know, wish you the best, <laughs> you know, because it's just not, it's, 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 it, it can more than, more than not, more times than not, it's going to turn into a massive waste of time. Why do you think men are more drawn to some of the red pill stuff these days? Because a few reasons, a few reasons. I think a lot of guys, you know, I'm not trying to incite anything here. But I think a lot of guys that are a part of the red pill community, a lot of them have not had much success with relationships with women. It's almost like they've not had great success. A lot of them have probably been hurt by women in the past. This is, these are, you know, it's just what I'm seeing. And so there's this community where you have a minority of them who are massive achievers and who are alphas in all of their various spheres. And they come together with this rhetoric on this, in this community saying, well, I can teach you how to break a woman down. I can teach you how to get the girl of your dreams and you want to be like me. And so now you got the majority of guys who've not had much success, who are somewhat angry because the woman that they loved and chased went off with a guy that looks very similar to the guy that's promoting this on this particular platform. And so I think it's like a, a clarion call for all of these guys that have been broken by women to come together, learn these tricks, bring these tricks back out into the world, become a terror to the very community, women that hurt you so badly. And then I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's attractive. I think the red pill community is attractive to men because clearly it's just speaking to men. Like you said to me, we got to talk to men. Well, they're not enough. They're not enough healthy, balanced voices, myself included, that are actually speaking to the issues of men in a very real way. If preachers speak to the issues of men, we're usually preaching sermons. We're not talking real life. We're not giving strategies. We're not talking about real life experiences. Well, when you go to the red pill community, though I don't agree with their, with 99.9% .9 of their rhetoric, the thing they have going for them is that they exclusively talk to men and it's content that is by men for men. And so be it good or not, depending on how you see it, it's two men. So it's very attractive. It's, it's supposedly teaching men how to manage and manipulate women. So it's attractive. Guys feel like they're going to have some level of success with women and that Success meaning manipulate, manage women. And so I believe for those reasons, a lot of guys are drawn to the red pill community. Taking a taking a, a sidestep, I feel like a lot of guys, they see like men who are super charismatic, outgoing, extroverted. They're the ones that are attracting the women. Like you've kind of talked about how you have to be confident in yourself, be 
um, willing to get rejected and walk over to a woman to get to know her and, and ask her out. Do you think that because some guys are just naturally not charismatic, they might be confident, but maybe they're not as extroverted. They're more on the quieter side. Do you think that's a skill that needs to be developed in order to attract women if they're not doing so already? Or do you think that there's another way they can do it? I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, Earth Echo Foods. I'm sure many of you are at the point where it's beginning to get tough to stick to your New Year's resolutions. I have something that may help. It's Cacao Bliss from Earth Echo Foods. Didn't think healthy chocolate existed? You're wrong. I've been using Cacao Bliss in my coffee or in my daily smoothie for over three years. Cacao Bliss is loaded with superfoods and it tastes great, making it the perfect blend to help you feel your best. To top it off, it's keto and vegan friendly. So go to earthechofoods.com slash Doug Bopst to check it out and learn more about the amazing benefits of Cacao Bliss. And when you enter in the promo code Doug at checkout, you'll get 15% off. Now back to the video. I would, would have never considered myself uh, a charismatic guy. You know what I mean? I've never been like a socialite, never was a guy that put myself in a lot of different uh, social settings, always was very cautious about approaching women because, you know, I didn't, I, it wasn't that I was afraid of, of rejection, but I come from a very powerful family of pastors. And, and so you know, my name, I couldn't afford to have stuff out there. So I've never been necessarily a charismatic guy, but I was always an extremely confident guy. And I think as a man develops his confidence, I think that energy begins to permeate any environment. If he, if he works on his finances, if he works on his body, if he works on his mind, I think, you know, going back to the guys that run these communities, these guys are visibly accomplished in these areas that I just mentioned. You listen to them, they are extremely well read. They are physically, the, these guys are extremely physically fit. These guys clearly have their finances together. These guys flying around in jets and Bugattis and all of this other kind of thing. So I think if a guy works on himself and if he can look in the mirror, and if he can say to himself, you know, create a scale in your own mind for you, you know, whereas we want to create scales for the women, create a scale for R.C. Blakes. On a scale of zero to 10, where do you rank R.C. based on what you know to be, what you honestly believe to be the best version of you? When I can say, okay, I'm, I'm an eight, I'm a nine, I'm a 10 in my own mind, that energy is going to go before me in any environment that I might embrace. Now, should guys intentionally work to be more charismatic? I think we should. Now, mind you, this was 30 years ago, the last time I dated. I've been married 29 years. This is a very different culture. So 30 years ago, the way women were kind of brought along, a guy could be a little more reserved and still get that kind of it. We didn't have social media. We didn't have women that, you know, were being influenced by what I call the toxic sisterhood. Guys didn't have to be as in your face to get attention. But if I were a young man today, I would work on myself. That would be primary. My, my money, my body, my mind, my spirit. And then I would work on my people skills. I would practice being able to walk in a room, look women in the eyes. You know, we are, we're always taught to look men in the eyes, but you got to look a woman in the eye as well. And I would practice learning to smile. I would practice being able to say, even if I'm not comfortable, hello, how are you? My name is, confidently, you know. I would practice that. So yes, I do believe that these skills should be developed for the right purposes not for the management and manipulation of the emotions of women, but for the projection of the best version of you as a man. I think we all got to learn. I've learned, I've since learned how to be more charismatic. There was a time, Doug, that I, would, I wouldn't smile. I was just never a guy that, that smiled. I mean, that would, you know, that would be my, my expression. You wouldn't get much out of me, you know, if something was funny. Yeah, 
And I go right back to that. It was my father who said, you're moving into a public life. If you're going to succeed in a public life, you have to lead with a demeanor that welcomes people in. So he started teaching me how to be more charismatic, not for the purposes of women, but for the purposes of just having natural people skills that allowed people to feel more comfortable around me. But the same thing translates into how a man functions in relationships with women. I want to talk more about attraction and in the sense where let's just say a guy has you know, connected with a woman, um, they've set up a date, they're going out, they're talking. What can a man do to get a woman to be attracted to him like throughout the process of all that? I think it depends on the woman. That's why dating is for data. You know what I mean? So we we should never enter into a dating experience with ideas of conclusions already. We should enter into dating experiences in real lifetime, getting the data to figure out who this person is, what's their emotional health like, what are their triggers, what have they gone through. So I think a guy should figure out who he's dealing with. And if this is a healthy woman that is wife material, I think at that point, all he has to do is model what makes a great husband, a, a provider. He, he, she may make more money than you at, at that point, but you need to communicate your vision, where you're going. You know, I've seen my wife made more money than me when we first got together, but she understood my vision. That's essential for healthy women that would be wife material women. I think um, learning to listen, I think learning to enforce as much as I teach women to enforce your boundaries. I think a woman is attracted to a man that has boundaries and enforces them. Healthy women trust themselves in the hands of men that are not so enamored with them that they would compromise uh, their own boundaries. I think sticking to your guns, being a listener, being a gentleman, demonstrating the, the, the soft, respectful side, but at the same time, demonstrating that I can protect you and I'm as much man as anybody else you might see in this room, you know, but I just possess a deeper sense of emotional uh, awareness, consciousness. Um, and, and then being a, being a supporter of her dreams. When you get the attention of a woman, when you get a woman to listen to you and a woman senses that, you know, here's a guy can't play with because he has limits. He has boundaries. Here's a guy that he handles me delicately, but I trust him to be the man if there's ever a physical situation that needs to be taken care of. But here's a guy that is as concerned about my dreams and my goals as he is about his own. I think there you have the kind of combination, you know, that a woman just can't really resist, especially if, especially if he's wise enough to never put sex on the table. If a man can go through all of that process to get to know the soul of a woman and never put sex on the table. But I recently sat down with my, my aunt, my mom's sister, and uh, her husband, and he talked about, they've been married 40 years. He talked about how he pursued my aunt. She tried to reject him, but he, he was consistent. He kept pursuing my aunt. And uh, she would give him little signals that she really was interested, but she thought she wanted another guy. And she eventually came to a place where she realized that she needed my present uncle versus the other guy she thought she wanted. And then my uncle let me in on a little of their personal business. And that was, 
he 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 never put sex on the table to the point she questioned if he was even attracted to her like that and he said to her i am attracted to you like this but i see you as my wife and so when a woman finds a man that can bring that combination of qualities you know what happens with that guy is he makes love to the woman's mind. And when, when a man can make love to, to a woman's mind, when you can settle all of her insecurity issues, when you can settle all of her, am I beautiful issues, when you can settle, am I worth it? All these are things that's going on in, in a woman's mind. When a man, when a man can settle all of those things and he can love a woman above and beyond a sexual experience, when it does come to a sexual relationship, ideally, coming from my Christian perspective, within the context of marriage, but when it does, whatever the case may be, come to a sexual relationship, it will be the most phenomenal experience of the man's life and the woman's life, because the man has played his role as leader in terms of steering the direction of the relationship. I know you host a, a fair amount of conferences, and like we've said, you speak with a lot of women. That's predominantly your audience. And I would imagine at these conferences or when you're speaking somewhere, you know, plenty of people come up to you. And I'm sure out of those people, some people will talk about their relationships and some of the issues that they've had. With all that said, is there a common theme you hear from women as far as what they want more from men, what they want more from men in relationships, men in general, et cetera? I think uh, support, inclusion, equality, you know, a sense of equality in terms of the relationship. I think the way a lot of relationships are going now, uh, because the roles have been so misconstrued, I think a lot of women are feeling feeling like they're being overwhelmed because now we have a generation of guys that say, well, I want sex on demand, but you know, I want you, I want you to bring 50%. I'm going to bring 50% or in some cases you bring 70, I'm going to bring 30. Uh, then I want you to take care of, I want you to have my children, take care of the children. Uh, I'm going to sit on the couch and drink a beer and watch the game I think women want support. I think women want to feel like they are equivalent in the relationship. And by that, I mean, you know, if you're a guy that has it all together, you know, understand that your wife is your primary partner in, in destiny. And so cluing her in, you know, bringing her, bringing her to the table informing her of certain moves you make, asking her to participate in certain things, making her part of your life. But support, you know, the, wanting the support of the man, supporting her dreams, her goals, feeling equivalent, I think those are probably among the, the top things that are constantly brought up by women who actually love guys who are actually in long-term committed relationships with guys and guys are just kind of sort of like missing it. And their women are struggling, you know, many times privately, sometimes they're vocal about it. But I think those are, those are among the, the top things that are constantly brought to my attention. Outside of things like social media, et cetera, like why do you think the modern dating world is such a mess? The breakdown of the nuclear family. I think social media has definitely played its part and is playing its part, but I think the breakdown of the nuclear family where we had men that were husbands, women that were wives, and children that were children. Now we don't we have no clear understanding of what roles are. We have no examples. I think the hookup culture is also problematic. This idea that I can just go out here and have as much sex as I want and somehow come out of that unscathed is just ludicrous to me. 
I think when women bought into the idea that they can be as sexually unrestrained as the most immature man, it it robbed womanhood of its virtue, which signals to manhood there are no women or no wives, should I say. And so when when men take their cues from the red pill community because they did not have or do not have fathers to speak manhood into them, now all we, 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 we end up with are the pimps and the prostitutes in terms of consciousness. And we're playing this out as relationships in a chaotic world where women have these unrealistic, unrealistic, toxic standards for what a quality man is. He has to be six feet tall, six figures, six pack. And then a man has these unrealistic, unrealistic expectations of a woman. And these two things are clashing. And so now we have language like war of the sexes. You know, how's there a war of the sexes when all a man thinks about is a woman and all a woman thinks about is a man? Why is there a war? It's because we have not we have lost the foundation of values and principles that lead to healthy, wholesome outcomes when it comes down to relationships. And so though, though we love one another, men love women, women love men, love is not enough. We have to have an understanding and we have to function with, within the guidelines or the restraints of certain principles. And these things are sorely lacking today, which is why we have to have these conversations. Pastor Blakes, thank you so much for coming on the podcast again. This has been an amazing conversation. If people want to connect with you, if they want to check out your videos on social media, if they want to attend one of your conferences or just find out more information in general, where's the best place to do that? They can go to rscblakes.com. That's my main website. If you want to follow my Queenology conferences that Lisa and I host, uh, that's queenology.net. And of course, go to my YouTube channel, RSC Blakes, for all of my content relative to women's empowerment, men's empowerment, so forth and so on. My Instagram also is RSC Blakes as well. Thank you, Doug, for the opportunity today. You got it. I, I really enjoyed talking to you again, and I think the audience is going to get a lot of value out of this conversation. So thank you once again for coming back on the show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you and your work. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I really think you're going to like this video as well. I'll see you there.